They're coming to get you, Barbara. The Dare, a horror podcast. Brought to you by Big Baby Studios. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Dead Air, a horror podcast. Now, before we start, I would like to inform everyone that if you want to talk about anything horror at all, please join our Facebook group called Dead Air, a horror fan page. You can post anything horror related there. And we have a bunch of people who are very active there, actually. If you don't know a lot of horror movies that have been coming out, people just inform each other there. And, you know, we have a good time um, judging each other's movie choices. So please join. Yes. Please join the Dead Air Horror Podcast Facebook group. And also, we do have a Facebook page that you can like. Please look for Dead Air a Horror Podcast. And we also have an Instagram that you can go to, which is Dead Air Pod. And you can ask us any questions there. Give us suggestions on this podcast because we are open to suggestions. And yeah, we really love hearing your input. So please follow us on all social media platforms and check out our link tree as well. Linktree.com slash Dead Air Pod to check out our Shopee affiliate link. Why? Because when you buy using our link, you help support us, all right? So I hope you can do that, guys. And uh, now we're going to officially start and I'm going to introduce myself. I'm one of the hosts of this podcast. My name is Aaron. And for the purpose of this podcast, I am the one who loves horror films but did not go to film school. So you're going to hear the guys talk about, oh, you know, this director's style is like this. Oh, you know, he always <laughs> does this. And I'm the one who goes, why? Really? Oh, what's that? So yeah, the, the non-film people are going to need me for this podcast because they get a little technical here. So let's introduce one of the technical hosts. <laughs> Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay. No, oh, I'll go what? first. I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll, it's like we never... I'll fight you for it. Like, all right, go first, dude. No, you go <laughs> first. I love you. All right. Oh, my God. I'm Miguel. I'm Miguel. I'm one of the hosts. Uh, I'm the token scaredy cat. But to be honest, I've been enjoying watching horror films over the pandemic. So this this podcast has been good to me. Yeah, Character <laughs> art. Character <laughs> art. Okay. So I'm the exact opposite of Miguel. Um, for the purposes of, of this podcast, I'm the horror fanatic. Um, out of the three of us, I am the biggest horror fan, I guess. Um, and But uh, that gives us a really nice uh, balance between the three <laughs> yeah. of us. We've, we've got a fan, we've got someone in the middle of the road, and then we've got yeah. a, someone like Miguel who is slowly turning to us. But, yeah. uh, you think Aaron thinks we're pretentious? I think that's what Aaron means when she says she absolutely guys. does. But uh, yeah, and, and every every episode, I kind of try to tone it down because I, I know, know I can't be. It can be extremely pretentious. All right. When it yeah. starts getting to theory, I'm kind of like, all right. Yeah. Whatever, fuck guys. these guys. <laughs> yeah. You keep us in check. Fine. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so um, we've got a pretty cool episode today. Um, no. Not you know you know what I really love is I really love when someone brings a, a fucking amazing movie and uh, <laughs> no, we got right. fucking amazing movie right yeah, now. This is a good one. <laughs> yeah, this is a really good one. This all is one in the, agreement for all this in agreement. Yes, all three hey. of us. I am one hundred percent sure. All of yes. us fucking love this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But enough about the movie and now about our guest. Yeah. So uh, our guest is an artist. And also a uh, super mom, I guess. Um, but uh, you know, and but what we need to know for this podcast is she's got incredible taste uh, because yes. she mm-hmm. brought us uh, an awesome movie, which we'll talk about in a bit. Yes. So let's welcome Catalana to Yay! the podcast. Welcome, yes. Kat. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Hi, guys. Thank, Thank you so much for having me. Thanks Thank for, you for this coming movie. on. This movie's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love this movie. Although, you know, can we just give a shout out to the the second runner up, the one that was supposed to also be a choice, which is the Frighteners? Because oh, they don't know that. They don't know that. Oh, oh I didn't know this. that. Okay, oh. yeah. Her, Although that was that was like second the, runner up was pretty awesome too. Yeah, okay, because yeah. that movie's also awesome. But then this movie kind of like trumped it. It, it was it was such a close tie, but I had to choose the other movie because. It's just got it. awesome. Yeah. You know, sorry, Michael J. Fox. And I <laughs> love it. But anyway, All right. going back right. to like the real movie of the day, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
Oh, but first, before we get to that, Kat, sorry. Yeah. So, so like, uh, we, 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 uh, we, we have a kind of a flow, which is pretty fun because it leads <laughs> into something. Um, you'll this. enjoy it. You'll enjoy it anyway. So, <laughs> first okay. of all, we start off with, uh, we start off asking you, uh, what is your horror origin story? So, what that means is, oh, how did you yeah. first experience horror? Was it a book? Was it, uh, you know, a movie? Is it is, is an actual experience? Happen? An actual experience. What is your horror origin story? Please tell us. Um, I, I wasn't allowed to watch horror as a child or a teenager. Like my my parents were very strict about movies that I watched. Um, but my horror experience actually started when I was a kid because it, it was real life experience. Like um, I see spirits sometimes, and when I was a kid, I Ooh. used to feel things, and you know, there weird things would happen. I would feel presences in the room, and it's not exactly horror, but it was pretty scary as a three-year-old to experience those kind of things, you know, and to like, yeah. um, yeah. It, so it was like real life stuff, you know, I've seen real things and I, I know there's a lot of skeptics out there. Like, well, I have never seen them. So how do I know they're real? I'm telling you, man, they're out there. Like yeah. it's, um, but there are other dimensions that we don't know about. And there's lots of things that are lurking that we have no idea. You know, I mean, we could go into the multidimensional theory that it's all happening at the same time. And we're all technically ghosts, but you know, whoa, um, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm awesome. ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's also yeah. a whole other episode. But anyway, so mine is real yeah. life experience. Like I've seen things and I've felt things and I've heard things and yeah. And then I mean, my 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 favorite horror genres are really I love vampires. I love ghost movies. Like those are my favorites. I like zombie movies, but I'm also scared that like if I watch zombie movies, it might actually happen in real life. I, I don't know why I don't feel that way about vampires. Mm. I feel like I wouldn't be so scared if vampires were real, but if zombies were real, I would really freak out. So, I feel the uh, same. I feel the same. I I would say with vampires because you know they're portrayed as kind of like sexy. So okay, yeah. all right, I can handle sexy. But zombies are just they they run after you. They're drooling. <laughs> they're gonna. Parang vampire bites aren't as disgusting as zombies. Right. That's right. right. They're, That's you know, having your cool. face eaten off. No, I mean like yeah. in, in in popular media, when a vampire bites you, it's like. Everyone reacts like they're having an orgasm. <laughs> but like if it's a fucking zombie, like, you're dead. You know you know what? <laughs> I, I had an idea the other day. Like, what if you did a zombie movie where the zombies were actually sophisticated and they knew how to hide oh. themselves in society? Like they learned how to wear makeup so you couldn't see the dead oh. skin and cover up the smell. And then they like, you know, like that, that shark movie, the really awful shark movie where, where the sharks are like sentient. You know what I mean? But What's like that? it's zombies doing the shark Sharknado? No, not Sharknado. It was like blue something. I, I forgot blue. what it was. It wasn't uh, great. Yes, but the, it was one like where, the one the, where, the uh, where Samuel L. Jackson gets eaten up. Deep blue sea. Yes. I like the yes. Oh yeah. Blue oh sea. my That's god. So fun. I love That's that movie so fun. much. <laughs> you I am love so, it. I love that movie so much. It's <laughs> the most ridiculous movie ever. Like once oh. you embrace how stupid it is. It is so much fun. Come on. Oh, man. Yeah. Yes, yes. It was yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But know. you know what I mean? Like, if yes. zombies yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. were clever yes. and, yes. like, yes. plot and plan, we'd be so screwed. Like, if <laughs> they were actually, like, real people and they can do all those things and then they came to eat you, it would be so scary. I would be terrified all the time. Life would just be terrifying. I already told people that if there was a zombie apocalypse, I will die. Like, I'm not gonna... <laughs> how do you fight that you're gonna run? You know, you've seen Zombieland. You have to do cardio. Wala na, dude. I'm just here. Just fucking take yeah. it. I'm, I'm gonna die anyway. <laughs> yeah, especially if they're like 28 days zombies that run really the fast. Run. Yeah. yeah. The sp- that sprint. No. Yeah, yeah that no, no, no. We're all done. Um... Um, first of all, I, I'd like to uh, say that our producer has a uh, very nice uh, podcast called Grimcast. And yes. then um, now that you've talked about having personal experiences, Kat, I think you'd be a, pers- a perfect guest because she does she does uh, talk about uh, um, real, with, uh, real experiences. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, so you know, uh, we might uh, hook you guys up after this uh, recording. Uh, yeah. I, think, sure. I think you guys would have a fun time talking about sure. that. Sure. I'm up now, for that. You mentioned, 
you mentioned uh, Chris the other podcast, right? So, just uh, jumping off that, the other podcast. What is the movie that you chose <laughs> for today's episode? Now that, my friends, it's is called a, a segue. A segue. <laughs> that's that's how you do it. <laughs> oh my god, Aaron. So Kat, please let us know the title of the movie that you chose today for us to enjoy. Oh, Aaron, thank you so much for that wonderful segue. We actually <laughs> chose The Others as the movie for no. the evening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, The Others starring Nicole Kidman. Um, yeah. Yeah, super awesome. Amena Bar the by others. Alejandro Amena Bar. Okay, so one of those so, Spanish, one of those Spanish dudes, yeah. One of the, one of those. Spanish there's a lot dudes. of them. There's, a, there's the, a lot. There's a lot of them, dude. There are a lot of Spanish people in the world, Miguel. <laughs> no, but <laughs> Spanish directors yeah. had this whole thing going on uh, some years ago. But anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kat, Kat, why do why do you choose uh, the others? I just think that it was so cleverly done, you know. And like, I think the most brilliant thing about this movie is that nothing actually happens. But you're terrified all the way through the film. You know, you're like, oh yeah. my God, it's not going to happen now. It's going to happen now. I know he's going to be there. He's going to be behind him. And like nothing ever happens until the end. And you're, you're like, oh my God, this was amazing. How did I get so scared when nothing happened? You know, yeah. so I think that's one of the brilliant things about this is that suspense it has a brilliant way of like keeping you in suspense. And keeping you on the edge of your seat. And of course, I mean, Nicole Kidman, she's always great in everything that she does, right? And the casting was good. I felt like the casting mm. was good. So, um, like, it was believable, you know what I mean? And uh, it's not one of those cheesy ghost stories where um, mm-hmm. you're like, uh, yeah, kind of, whatever. I liked it a lot. That's why awesome. it was today's show. Totally and I agree. actually think the little boy was so good. Oh, dude, he, he was, was so perpetually good. afraid, and I believed it the entire time. Yeah, he was, so good. Yeah. He was so good. He really was. Um, <laughs> so, so Cat, like, uh, are you ready, Miguel? I'm, I'm segueing sure. into, uh, yeah, okay. So, it's, so Cat, like, what we usually role. do, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what we usually do is uh, we always take a check on uh, our resident scary, scary cat. And uh, we kind of test him on whether he actually watched the movie that our guest chooses. And we ask him to, to, to give like a quick synopsis or like a recap of like whatever the, the movie's yeah. about. So, how, so how what we're going to do is we're, we're going we're gonna to ask Miguel to recap what the without movie's reading about Wikipedia. without reading Wikipedia. And then we're going to ask you if you're okay with his, uh, where, his where? recap. When did, this, uh-huh. when did this tradition even start? It started at the great. beginning. Skip, it, when you great. skipped watching, the con, when you the conjuring. When the conjuring, yeah, when you refused yeah. to watch it, that's when it started. Yeah, yeah. Because All righty. So good. the other. So I actually saw the I others. But, I understand. <laughs> so so scary, non conjuring. Eh? Like I, sp- I sat five minutes in it. I said. It's a nope for no, me. No. <laughs> no, no, I get it. I even before, even before, know, even before anything so happened, yeah. But I did see the others when it came out. I sat through it in the cinema and I loved it. So it's Nicole Kidman as a mom with two kids. And they, it's a period film. They live in this really old house. And uh, Nicole Kidman and her two kids. I think her husband died in the war. This was around in the early 19th. I, I think World War One or World War II. She And then three mysterious people come to the house and apply as... Helpers, like a caretaker, a groundsman, and somebody else. So there's three persons who apply. And Nicole Kidman, because she's alone and she has two kids, she takes them in to work for her. And then living in this house gave them really strange experiences. Like uh, they'd see things, they'd feel things, they'd hear things. Things would move around the house. And I think this kind of increased uh, Nicole Kidman's character's paranoia. And then I think, from what I remember, I think, she felt that the three servants were in cahoots with whatever was happening in the house. So, kutub nani Nicole Kidman na this place is haunted and then things happen, things go awry. Uh, her husband from the war who's dead arrives and they spend time together but parang he's kind of weird and distant. And then, it comes to the point where uh, Nicole Kidman, I think something happens, like there's a, they meet a spirit and the spirit, and, it, it, and meeting the spirit they kind of realized that the spirit is actually a real person. She's the medium and they're in a seance and it, and Nicole finds out now they're the dead people. 
she, her kids, and the servants are the dead people. And not only are they the dead people, not only are they the others. I think Nicole Kidman killed her kids, then killed herself. It gets really dark. Because nga, she was, her husband died, and she was a widow, and she couldn't cope with it. And that's the reveal at the end. Should I, spoilers. No, well, no, we, we spoil everything. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah we spoil it, yeah. I mean, the title is in, the, like, in our podcast, so people yeah, should yeah. know. And this came out 20 years ago, guys. I should have seen it by then. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, 20 years? Uh, yeah. Two, Dude, 2001. I wasn't, I wasn't born 20 years ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that is the end of this podcast okay. because okay. it is a lie. <laughs> because it's a lie. Okay. Kat, what do you think of, of Miguel's uh, recap? I think it was pretty good. Like for concise, it was pretty mm-hmm. good. Like you missed out a couple of details. Mm-hmm. But you know, how many, yeah, which stars, how many stars would you give? <laughs> I, I would give you a three and out a half five. out of five. Three and a half. Three three and and a half. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's good. Hey, that's, that's, that's better than my the conjuring grade, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you got zero <laughs> for that one. What parts did they miss about the piano playing? There's like some details that I wanted to remember, but I forgot. Yeah, like the um the pictures, um <laughs> the, the kids seeing the spirits and then like them going from room to room, somebody playing the piano, the pictures of the dead people, um, right. yeah, and also sitting up in their chairs. Them, yeah. Yeah, the graveyard, right. I and think, was there a graveyard? Yeah. yeah, the graves in the in the yard, yes. and then yeah. like um, when Nicole Kidman finds her husband in the fog outside the house, wandering like aimlessly, you know, like yes, and, uh, that's the uh, but that's kind of very detailed, and that would have been long, so that's yeah. why I gave you three point five because you got all the main. I'll take it. Yes, you got all the main. Thank you. I want to add that two thousand one, two years removed from the Sixth Sense. Which also has the same Bingo. plot, like the dead people don't realize uh, the pe- the characters in the movie don't realize that they're dead. But despite that, the others was super unique and like you know it's not like a fresh movie, despite yeah. having the same plot point a little. But ang galing pa ng how the others. First of all, it's a beautiful yeah. film. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. we actually we actually on, on the that their um, Facebook group that was one of the first like uh, polls we did. Was a you know um, sixth sense or the others? Yeah. It was the very the and then oh, I was surprised. Right. I was surprised, dude. The others murdered sixth <laughs> sense. Like everyone <laughs> preferred the six uh, the others over the sixth sense, which uh, like for me, like no question. Like I, I yeah, I absolutely think uh, the others is a the superior film. No question. I think it's amazing. I think it's a masterpiece. I do. Lo- I. I still do enjoy the Sixth Sense a lot, though. But um, yeah, it is really good. You can, I, I really think like the, the two movies came out at roughly the same time, so it's, I think they're always tied together. Compared, um, so it's always it's like, like Armageddon and Deep Impact. Of yeah, horror. exactly. Yeah, or <laughs> Ants and Bug Life. Uh, uh, yeah. A Bug's Life, you know. Which, yeah. uh, it's like they came out like too close together, and the themes are way too similar. So <laughs> it's 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 inevitable that they be uh, compared. But uh, what, what do you guys think about? It? I mean, I think maybe we'll, let's start with that. Like, uh, it, it's it's what everyone talks about the similarity between Sixth Sense and the others. What do you guys think about? It? Well, I did talk about it a bit with you guys earlier that um, with Sixth Sense, I still think that knowing the ending, you will still get scared watching the movie because there's a lot of jump scares and the way they show the ghost is very graphic. Like. See Misha Barton, right? It's just vomiting and stuff like that. So I think uh, in yes. that sense, Sixth Sense is still scarier, mm. but the others is prettier to watch. It's it's you know it's it's not as ugh, scary. But yeah. knowing the ending yeah. of the others, when you watch it again, you're not as scared at all as you were the first time you watched it. Because Sixth Sense can still you know scare you like that, but the others, since you know already, like. What's happening? I this is my second time to see it, and I mm-hmm. didn't get as scared mm-hmm. as I did the first time I watched it. So, yeah, mm. that's my thoughts. Yeah, what do you think? Which one came out first? Was it Sixth Sense? Apparently, it was Sixth Sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think that it is very similar, and I think that it's brilliant that they still managed to pull it off because that's hard. Yeah, you know, to have a film yep. already do that ending and then be able to do it as well. You know, and, and I mean, I watched, I've watched it a few times and I haven't watched it in a long time until recently again. I still got scared, you know, I was still yeah. like, oh, 
there's going to be something like I couldn't yeah. remember like when the shock was going to come. So I was still on the edge of my seat. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like, I mean, for me, because I also like do writing and producing and stuff, right? Like I also, um, I'm very appreciative of people's timing and like the way that they are capable of doing scenes where it's not cheesy. You know what I mean? It's not cheesy. It's not uh, put forced. They're not trying to force you to be scared. And they've managed to get this like natural rhythm throughout of you just being like, oh, he's going sure. to yeah. be a ghost. Somebody's dead. Is it going to be, oh my God, you know? Sure. And like, so I really appreciate it when they're able to do something like that. And they absolutely did. There was no ruining it because, oh, it's like the sixth sense. Like it wasn't like that when it came out. Mm-hmm. It was still a really good movie. And you yeah. know, you can't go wrong yeah. with Nicole Kidman. If you put Nicole Kidman in something, sure. it's going to be. <laughs> I, I was going to say, this is yeah, agree. Yeah. I really, I'll, 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 oh. I'll defend it later, but I really think this is her best role. <laughs> Yeah, I was reading up on IMDb. So the others came out after she did Moulin Rouge. And she was kind of hesitant to take on the others' role because she came off this really happy and, you know, highly dramatic and highly artistic thing in Moulin Rouge. And a horrible movie. And she didn't want to do something super dark and super sad. But I'm glad she did because she was super good in it. And I think one of the reasons why the others comes off as really fresh and original and still very effective as a movie, uh, despite coming out two years after Six Sense. It's, it's really well made. But it's really beautiful to watch. It's really artistic. But it's just a whole other level of filmmaking. Sorry, should, I, I didn't mean to bash my chime a little bit. You know, but it's really good. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's why I kind of brought it up because, like, I think the, it's, it's really fun to bash him right now. <laughs> I mean, like, oh my God, he's like, done like, fuck, fucking clunkers, like some really bad movies. But I, I love Sixth Sense. So that's why I think that the, those two movies are, these two movies are really connected. They'll, they'll be connected forever because they came out a bit really kind of soon after each other. And they've got like the massive twist at the end. But what I want to talk about is like, uh, the, the twist of the others is isn't what you think. Like it's not just you know, mm. spoiler again that <laughs> Nicole Kidman and her family are dead. The twist is they're the, they're being haunted by the living. That's so yeah. fucking cool. Like it's such a fucking awesome you know twist. Like the ghosts are being haunted by the living. Like I thought that was yeah. brilliant. Like yeah, and yeah. again like it really popped. Uh, seeing it again like. I, I saw it, um, I've seen this movie a number of times, um, but I think the last time I saw it was uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe a decade ago. So watching it again with fresh eyes and then knowing everything, all, all the dialogue is so like, it, it's it's such a tight movie for me. Like, it's mm. so tight. And then and then realizing the the heft of, of that twist where, they reveal that they're being haunted by the living. Like everyone, like we like when I talk to like you know a lot of people, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you know, they're, they're all dead. But like for me, like the bigger twist is, yeah, they were dead, but they were being haunted by the living. That's like the, <laughs> that's like the fucking badass part of this yeah. movie. Like it's 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 so clever. And aside from being yeah, such a see, beautiful movie, but you know it's what? So clever. Like. Yes. I want to jump on the back of that because that's what I was saying about multidimensional universe stuff. Mm-hmm. Because this movie oh. is so smart. Because remember what she says at the end, the housekeeper, she says, some of them see us, some of us don't. Sometimes we see them, sometimes we don't. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. And she's talking about people, but you don't know she's talking about people or she's yes. talking about ghosts, you know? Yep. And like, so that oh. kind of brings up the question, like, what if when we die, we go into a different dimension and we're alive again? So what if ghosts are just people on different like cross timelines? What if we're just crossing paths with different dimensional people? You know what I mean? And what if we're mm. their ghosts? Mm. Like what yeah. if somebody saw I, me I think and they're that's like, oh my God. exactly what they're saying. Know, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I think and, exactly and that's why I thought it was so thesis. clever as well. Yeah. You know? Yes, absolutely. I, I think that's exa- the exact thesis of this movie, which is like, uh, you just don't know. Like, like you, like it starts off with um, Nicole Kidman waking up and screaming and my understanding of that is that was the second she died oh like she, she killed herself yeah. and the start of yeah. the movie is she screams yeah. because she wakes up and she's dead 
you know, yeah. and that's now her universe, you know, um, and then that's why that day when she wakes up, that's when all the helpers came in, the house help came in and they're like, okay, we got to ease her in into this new life because yeah. she just fucking killed herself and she doesn't understand what's happening, you know, and that's why watching it with like these eyes, knowing what the twist is, makes it uh, so fulfilling because um, <clears throat> it starts off like literally uh, Mr. Uh, Tuttle, the gardener comes in and then his, the first line of the movie is he says um, something like, yeah, he's probably dead like all the others or something like that. But basically saying that, yeah, it's, it's a woman mm. and her children. And uh, they were probably talking about her husband. So, so like the first line of the movie is he's saying that, yeah, her husband is dead. Like these people mm. we are about to meet, you know? So, and then, and then when you get, when you realize that you're like, Oh my God. So like, now, now you, you, you view it in this lens where like, they're like, you see these, these help, the, the, the house help coming in. And then you're like, okay, so, so they're coming into kind of like ease things in for, for, for Nicole Kidman and her family. And, and then everything, every line of dialogue after that takes on a different meaning. And then I'm telling you, it, it, it's so weird seeing it now and then realizing that they're really, trying to make her uh, realize that she's dead. It's amazing writing when you realize that that's what they're doing. If you don't know what that is, you're just think, you just think that it's like, okay, it's just pushing the, the story forward. But when you know that they, the house help are trying to make her understand that she's dead, the movie is so fun to watch. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. No, I, oh, you I, really I, like the movie, huh? No, I don't. I really kinda, did. Kinda, I really kinda. did. Ar- I really Aaron, did. Aaron, yeah. what do you think about the movie? <laughs> no, I like the movie too. I liked it, but not in the way that Chris seems to really. I know. Yeah. He, he went into and a I, zone. I know. He went oh, into a zone, and I'm sorry. just like, yeah, yeah. I, no, it's I, cool. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. so amazing though. It's, it's such, such an incredible movie. Now that you mentioned yeah. that the moment she woke up was probably the time she died, I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Yeah, because in the end, end, she says it too. In the end, she says like, because she killed him with a pillow or something and then she shot herself, right? Yes, and then she yeah, said, yeah. and then and then there was nothing. And then suddenly I woke up and you were playing that's in the it. other room. Yep. Mm. And that's when the, we, yep. we begin the movie right when she's died. Yep. And that's like, mm. you know, Incredible. that's where it starts. Dude, it's like, it me, yes, sorry, go ahead, Aaron. It made me wonder no, about the disease, the the photos, like tuberculosis, TB. No. Oh, it was yeah, TB. It was a, it was, it was a pandemic. It was a pandemic get... movie then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah TB. Yeah. Oh, so died. appropriate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. exactly. She yeah, they died course. from tuberculosis. Sorry, she directed the Alejandro Amenabar. He has that recurring theme in his movies about Aaron. Here we go. The, the, no, no, I mean just no, just like the here waking life, like so like the when director, you like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean whether yeah. you're in reality or not, and which is the actual reality. Shall we know? Uh, remember that Open your eyes. guy? Yeah, yeah. So he did the Spanish, oh. the original Spanish version. I hated that movie. <laughs> which I one, the Spanish that. one or the remake? Uh, or the one with Penelope Cruz. Yeah. The, the that was it was terrible. Okay, Sorry, no one, like no, one was, really no one, tag, uh, no one tagged Ramon de Vera. In Ramon, this, uh, <laughs> who loves that movie. No, but uh, <laughs> I think. Hold on, let me figure out if. Let me figure out if Penelope was in both the Spanish. She's in and both. The, yeah, she's in both. Ah, so she was like the same oh. character. Yes. Oh, Galeng. But I remember watching Vanilla Sky, the Hollywood version, and like I wasn't keen on it also. But it had a very good soundtrack. But anyway, we're digressing <laughs> back to yeah. the other. Yeah. I really did, though. Great yeah. soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but you know you know you know what what uh, what, what struck me for watching uh, the others again for the first time well, not for the first time for, for I mean <laughs> watching it again yes, after a, a few years yeah. it, it is so beautiful like it, it's so like everything about it for me is is so um, classical uh, mm. the score is incredible uh, the opening. Um, the OBB is beautiful with, with the illustrations, the hand-drawn illustrations, gorgeous. The, the acting is incredible, obviously. And, and uh, see, Amenabar did everything. He, he, uh, he wrote it, directed it. He also did the music. Mm. So 
so like like it's 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 a real uh, auteur's work and then you okay. can really for me I like you can really feel the filmmaker's love in in the creation of this movie like I really think it's so beautiful like uh, like as a story it's not it's not really for me it, it's obviously we classify it as horror because we're talking about ghosts and uh, you know the other realm but uh it's 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 a, obviously it's more of a tragedy it's a it's a drama with horror mm. elements you know for me so like fucking gorgeous uh, can we goes. talk about like the moment when she finds her husband like i found that whole thing with her husband coming home like super uh, I don't know, like moving, so you know, sad. she goes out, so she, sad. she ran out, right. Cause she got freaked out about the people in the house was at the time when she ran out. Like yeah. they thought that she there was were intruders, the right. When the doors were opening mm-hmm. and everything, right. She was going to go see the priest and she gets lost in that fog. And then she just finds her husband. Like he's been gone for years at the war. All of a sudden he's wandering in the fog in his military uniform. and like, Hey, I'm here. I was trying to find my way home, you know? And yeah. she's like, what are you doing here? He's like, I-, I was trying to find my home. And she takes him home. And then there's this thing and, and he's so distant. And you think, is it PTSD? Mm-hmm. You know, is he like shell shocked? You know, is it a thing? And, and he's being so cold to her and all these things. And then they have this like, uh, you know, incredibly passionate moment. And then he's just gone. And he says, yeah, I yeah. have to go back to the front and the war is over. And that's when you're like, what? Yeah, you know, right? like, like, yeah. his yeah, ghost weird. is like, haunting the front of the war. You know, he's constantly going to be yeah. on the battle lines in the front of the battle lines. That's where he was. His killed, whole like probably. afterlife. Mm, right. Yeah. yeah. And he has to go back to do it. Isn't that crazy? Mm. Like it just, it was so like made for the whole, the whole way her relationship was written and how sad she was about it. And like him being gone and then him coming back and having this, and then he's gone again, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's so sad because at that point she's dead, but he can't even stay with her, you know? Like mm-hmm. they can't even be together in the afterlife in the house. He's got to go back to do his thing. And I like, I found that really, um, I thought that was a really good piece of writing. You know, it wasn't like that cheesy love story stuff. But obviously, you can I don't like cheesy love stories. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I just thought it was really well written and it like showed that kind of, I feel like there's so many people who could have resonated, like older people who resonated with that, like losing a loved one in the war or something like that and having that kind of ripped away from them, but then having them again for a moment and then having to let them go again. It's, it was just, it's very like emotionally triggering, I guess, you know? Yeah. So, so like, um, I, I've uh, done a little reading. <laughs> <laughs> And you always have to preface it with that yeah, so yeah. people don't Go think that you're pretending like you know <laughs> shit <laughs> when you don't. But, but but with each episode, we got to research about it. So apparently, a lot of people think that this is inspired by uh, um, Henry James's uh, book, uh, The Turn of the Screw, which I have not read. But not. they they say that also um, another popular horror um, franchise, uh, The Haunting of... Um, yeah. which is on a hill house. Well, the sequel, The Haunting of Bly Manor, oh. um, mm-hmm. is based on. Um, oh. and I, I really think that, yeah, so it's, it's really that kind of like, uh, same, same, um, thing where it's, 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 it's a gothic horror and, uh, it's really dark drama with, uh, horror elements in it. Mm. And it's, it's obviously a tragedy. Have you guys seen The uh, Haunting of Bly Manor? Mm. No, no, it's because it's house. scary. Neither, no one. Yeah. <laughs> no, have you? No. It's not. That's the that's it the is, thing. That's what is. I'm trying to say. He's like the others is isn't scary. scary. No, no, I know. I've no. I've been told that it's really well. No, the haunting of Hill House. The haunting of the first one. The haunting of Hill House is scary. The yeah. second one, which is the haunting of Blind Manor, is not. It's uh, okay. it's a uh, it's, it's about, more of a it's romance. About, it's about family, the bar. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's about tragedy. It's it's about it's about like a really really sad house. Uh, okay <laughs> it's not a scary house it's like a really sad house yeah and that's kind of people. like the same yeah. <laughs> yeah but 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 yeah okay. so i i find it really really cool that uh because i i have i have problems classifying the others as horror mm. well, well no i don't I, I don't because they're like absolutely horrifying moments sure, yeah. but it's 100% horror but but 
it's so tragic for me. Like mm-hmm. I really mm-hmm. view it as a tragedy more than more than anything. Like mm-hmm. especially watching it now when I'm older and I kind of get all the 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 hidden metaphors and everything. It's so fucking mm-hmm. sad. It's such a sad story. And then yeah. I'm kind of building up into I kind of want to lead into um Nicole Kidman's acting because I'm really not a fan of Nicole Kidman. But oh. this movie, I think she's fucking amazing. Like I think mm-hmm. she's incredible. Um but I kind of wanted to ask Kat no, um because I- I'm sure you've kind of dabbled in acting. Uh, like for me with, with someone like with 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 uh someone like Nicole, I, I don't want to generalize, right? But she's incredible. Um she but she's kind of devolved into someone kind of one note, you know, and so so that's why this this really stands out to me because again, like I say, like I'm I was never a big Nicole Kidman fan, but this movie I think she's freaking she's incredible. Like I really feel she is this uptight mother who snaps because she's mm-hmm. so depressed, and I really believe that she mm. fucking lost it and killed her children, you know. I but 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 like. Like, uh, what I'm saying basically is I'm not a big fan of her, but okay. I think she's but amazing she's... in this movie. Okay. That's Got basically it. what I mean, I'm trying to say. I, I agree with you. Like, I, I understand what you mean about her being one note. I don't think that's necessarily her fault. I think that because of the way she looks and the way that she sounds, she may have been typecast into certain mm-hmm. roles mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. as sure. a certain character. Yes. You're kind of very timid and like whatever. Um, I mean, although in Eyes Wide Shut, was it Eyes Wide Shut with Tom Cruise, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She's yes. she was pretty badass in that. That was that was like uh she was yes. pretty good in that yes. as well. Totally. And I mean, I, I know you don't like Mulan Rouge as a movie, but I thought she was also very good in that. It's not easy to do what she did in that film, you know. What so for doing, me, yeah. like I I'm sorry, I didn't I mean to offend anyone. That. I saw I saw no, Aaron no, no. giving me Aaron was giving me the evil eye over Zoom. But uh yeah. No, I'm just appreciating her her art- artistness, uh if that's even a word, right? Yeah. Um, but in this film, I, I thought exactly the same thing. I felt like it was a very different character for her to play. Right? And that she did it really well. Like she did this stern house mom especially because she's got this obsession with locking all the doors right all doors yeah. have to be locked before you yep. go into another room and like she you know she's so good in this movie yeah she's so good. really good she did a like hypertensive like uh school mom really well you know mm. like uptight mm. and and just um but that's what i meant about like the love thing with her husband because that's when you see sort of a more loving side of her but it's not over the top. It's not her throwing herself at him and kissing him and all mm-hmm. this. Like, you know, it's this like trying to salvage something from a man that she feels she's lost and doesn't mm. know how to reconnect with, you know, and like you sure. feel her pain and she's trying to be strong for her kids. Like she doesn't even tell her kids that he leaves at the end, like when he's yeah. gone. Right. So she yeah. like, she just takes it all in and she's just trying to cope. I'm like, that's, it essentially like that's why she killed herself because she was yeah. just you know that yeah. uptight keeping it all in oh my gosh you know boom that was it she just couldn't handle it in. but she did a great job at portraying that and i think that's really what carried the movie i mean the casting was really good don't get me wrong like everybody was good so the good. kids especially the kids were so good it's very so hard good. to cast kids you know very difficult to do that but she really did carry the movie i mean not just because she's the main character obviously but like she just had this energy. She just had this presence throughout the movie that kept it going, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. So I thought 100%. she was really good. And I agree. So uh, um, also, uh, what's your name? Um, Miss, uh, what was your name? The, the uh, elder help? Miss Millis. Mills, sorry. Miss Mills. Yeah. She's still yeah. alive. Oh, this movie was made okay. twenty plus years ago, and this that's looks, true too. Sorry, sorry, it's, it's funny. I, I just did a lot of like IMDb searching and then like checking up on everyone, like all the the, the, yeah, the, was like, the kids. Alive. Like, oh, okay. you know what's surprising yeah, sorry, to me? Is it is it surprising? The hus- she look- or the husband is played by Christopher Eccleston. Eccleston. Yeah, Eccleston. Oh, sorry, amazing. yeah. I didn't realize that at all. And this is a guy who I loved in the what leftovers, he? and I didn't. He's he's a guy in the left. He's a character actor. He came out in the leftovers. A show twenty eight weeks some, later, the sequel ah, to twenty eight days. Yeah, 
Very I think good. he might have been. I think he might have played a doctor also, so Doctor Who in the UK. He's also in, um, yeah, very, something like that. Yeah. But anyway, he's a so good actor. I forgot. He's, he's, a, he's a good actor. Good actor. Remember how a lot of the horror movies we watch, parang lot, one of the themes is that the horror comes from a very personal place, and a lot of that, and often it's grief. Like this is the nth horror movie that we loved, where grief plays a bit of a part in shaping oh uh, the main character. That's really, dude, that's really good, and uh, like that's a really cool. Baba Duk then, Baba Duk then, yon, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I feel so like, that the horror really works when there's real emotion attached to it, yeah. and grief is so powerful and emotion. So and whenever it's done also, properly, yeah. yeah, yeah, it really resonates with me. So that's why this is that's a really great observation, uh, Miguel. I totally yeah. agree with you. You know me. <laughs> I do. <laughs> no, yeah, and I did notice that that those are the movies that you guys like the most. Like where, the, where there's a story like that, right? Like Midsommar, yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. breakup. It's a breakup movie. Uh, Baba Duke, it's all you know, griefy and stuff. Griefy, griefy, but yeah, griefy. Yeah. But I think yeah, that's what <laughs> makes that's what makes these movies different from other horror movies. It's not just like boom, scary. Yeah, it's yeah. not like I wouldn't say, for example, the others isn't fun to watch with the barcada. Yes, compared- absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Compared to Cab- to yeah, that. compared to Cabin yeah. in the Woods or something. Yeah, yeah. Six yeah. Sense, even that's fun. Drag to me to hell. Yes. Drag yes. me to hell. Yes. Fun to yes, watch yes, with yes, the barcada, yes. stuff like that, stuff like that. So it just makes oh, it a, not a great movie, movie, but good to watch with your barcada. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Super fun that's movie. Yeah. Which, uh, we actually we, had to watch that we, again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Was it was way too intense for me. I felt like I was on a horror <laughs> roller coaster, like. I'd literally be up to here and then like it would come all the way down and then my heart would jump back up in my chair. Like oh, it was, what, it was what like, I always <laughs> say about drag me to hell is that is the worst uh, treatment of a main character I've ever seen <laughs> ever. <laughs> like that oh, poor on. girl at the very end, like what did she do to deserve that ending? <laughs> nothing, 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 really. nothing. I and know. that movie was so graphic and this movie was not graphic at all. Like yeah. the creepiest yeah. part was the, 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 the Lola in yeah. the dress. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. Lola in the dress yes. and the dead people's pictures. But there's nothing graphic about the dead people's nothing, pictures. Nothing. They're just, they had their eyes yeah. closed. But the idea that, oh yeah, they're dead. They're just having their picture taken. See? They're dead. But that's the genius. That's yeah, what I was saying. Exactly. Is that's why it's genius because nothing happened. Yeah. It's not drag yeah. me to hell where everything happens and you're screaming <laughs> yeah. and you're like freaking out. It's like there's nothing that happens. You don't see a single like scary pop up or whatever, you know. I mean, apart from when the old lady is there and has taken over the kid or like the kid takes over the old lady, whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just so uh, how are you so scared over something that never happens? Yeah. You know? Absolutely. It's like, how did you do that to me? Yeah. That I was scared the whole time. That's a, I, I didn't I, actually see anything. <laughs> I uh, 100% attribute that to uh, Amanda Barr because like I mean like the atmosphere atmosphere he made in, the, in this film I mean just just the whole setup I mean like you know you, you everyone every room is a uh, you know it, it's shrouded in darkness you gotta every everything is like lit by candlelight and like the whole atmosphere the whole film is just so creepy it's so unlike any other horror film where or like like this one jump scare maybe, but it's more like the whole thing is yeah. just creeping dread. Mm-hmm. The entire movie is just creeping dread. You're just like, yeah. what is happening? Like there's something off every single frame. And even the way, for example, like if you watch another scary movie and then you hear a piano play, it's usually some creepy dun dun dun. This mm-hmm. one, he was straight up playing a really good piano piece. It's just that. There's no one in the house, but she's hearing this beautiful piano piece, and she's just yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't a creepy piece. It was just the piano is playing, and the piano is playing really nice music. So, lang. It, it was yeah, it was nice. The way that they were freaking us out wasn't well, yeah, exactly the regular kind yeah. of freaking people out. So, yeah, I did like that a lot. 
Miguel, what else did you find out about this? Movie I know. I'm IMDb. looking at his face. He's just. I like, can see no, him. Sorry, I was just like he's leaning yeah. in. That no, I was just like he's on IMDb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fine. I'm. I'm. I think I've said enough. Like the grief thing was my name. <laughs> <laughs> I am done for the day. I, I, I'm I'm done processing this movie. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but from that, is it from that framing? I, I mean, I understand why we're saying, oh shit, this is a, a fun movie. <laughs> Whatever it's, I don't know about it. Like, uh, oh, it's, it's, yeah. it's heavy. It, it's heavy. It should be every heavy, movie. Yeah. Every horror movie about grief isn't is not fun at all. But it but yeah. it really sticks with you. You know. Yeah. It's, it's, Wait, it's there's gonna be a remake. See, now you got me looking on Google. No, there's gonna no. be a remake. Ayano. No, don't say that. Yes, Meron. No. no. Ayano. <laughs> no. Universal Pictures option don't do the it. rights to the others do it. from Sentient Entertainment. <laughs> no. Which acquired control of the rights in a heated bidding. Yo, Disagree. there's gonna be a remake. Disagree forever. Don't do it. Disagree. Well, let's just see. Let's see what they're what they're gonna do with it. Because 2001, that was when you say 20 years ago. We were in high school. Well, I was in high school. <laughs> I mean, so, I so, were was in we, high school. so were we. We were in high school. So yes. I was, yeah, I was, yeah, I was, I was in high school. Yes. Dude, dude, we were, right. 2000 when we were graduating college. Shut up. That's not even pretend. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I was yeah. in college. VCD, 2001? I yeah, watched yeah. this, the two disc VCD that you have to change. Yeah. This one. I remember watching it that way, so. Yeah, this was a long time ago. I don't mind it getting a remake. Let's see. 20 <sighs> years? Yeah, it's time. It's time. You know what? Like, can I just say, why does anything have to have a remake unless it's something yes. from the 1940s or like yeah. something like that? Why does it have to have a remake? Why do all think, these movies have to have a remake? I think you should only remake bad films. And make <laughs> yeah. it better. And, and, <laughs> and give make it, it a better. second shot. Yeah. Why would yeah. you remake a fucking masterpiece like you you probably think you've had you you had the balls to do it like <laughs> you know like why it's just kapal yeah. it's just kapal see if we can make it better we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll i see. mean it's a no but we'll see it's a no <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i remember when an odd i don't know if you ever saw that movie the haunting just the haunting and then yes, it was a Captain black and David white Jones. movie. Was, oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the much older ones. Yeah. Yeah, so there was a yes. black and white movie, which was already good. And then they made The Haunting and I didn't like it. But this was also during the time where I feel like horror movies, the 2000s horror movies, we talked about this before, were a little like yeah, suspect. super CGI. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Drag Me to Hell is in that category. Yes. So when they made The Haunting and they started putting faces in the blankets, I'm just like, all right, this, I'm seeing yeah, too much. Yeah. It's like, it's fake. You can yeah, tell. It is. So I think we are at an era now where remakes won't be that bad. Maybe. I'm hoping for the best. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I don't know. Go ahead, go I've go never, ahead. I've yeah. never liked a remake. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, especially if it's a really good movie. Like, it is. It is kapal. It's like, why would you take a perfectly good masterpiece? Well, mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I won't mention any names, but apparently yeah. somebody <laughs> very famous uh, in the Philippines used to take like famous artworks and then redo them like a Picasso and then like touch them up themselves. You know what I mean? Whoa. It's like, what? <laughs> why would you do that? Like, <laughs> it just doesn't make any no. sense. Uh, and I've never liked remake. I've never liked a remake. I've never watched a remake that I it's liked, a bit, honestly. Yeah. It's a bit lazy. Like, I wish we had, I wish we'd focus our creative and financial resources on new ideas and new stories yes. versus doing a remake, which is, which, but a remake is basically a money grab. Like, this movie did really well with a crowd 20 years ago. Let's do it again because it's a, it's a tried and tested formula. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. I'm not, it's I'm not lecturing on all remakes. Like some of them it's are. Lazy. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I very much agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm totally with you. Like, if you're gonna do something, make something completely <laughs> new. You know, I make it amazing as well. Yeah, right. Like that's the Absolutely. way to do it. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's risk it's riskier, but you know, nothing come nothing great comes out from not risking an idea or a concept. And you know, we should do more of that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. risk more. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, Kat, you, you chose uh, The Others, which is a 2001 film. Are there any uh, more recent horror films that you kind of enjoyed? 
I think the last horror film I actually watched was Train to Busan. Ooh, oh, wow. um, nobody picked that out yet, no? That's, that's fun. Fucking yeah, which kind, of, which kind yeah. of freaked me out, too. And I was like, yeah. oh, shit, running I zombies. I love that movie yeah. so much. I love that movie. You sequel, though, not so good, though. No, don't even bother. The sequel's horrible. The Peninsula? Yes. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, don't yeah. even bother. It's sayang when they waste them. Yung sayang. Hindi na nga remake. They're, pay- they're playing off the success of a previous film. Tapos hindi pa okay. That's so sad. <laughs> Yeah, train I also watched um what's the what's the one with the nun? Oh my the god, nun? I don't know. Conjuring <laughs> Conjuring 2? No. <laughs> and then the nun. I know there was a movie it's Conjuring 2, two right? Is it Conjuring 2? And then oh Yeah, yeah I watched god. that too. I watched oh. that too. I mean, that wasn't so bad except for the nun part and then the nun was kind of like uh, why is this Ugh. nun so scary? <laughs> like uh, yeah, why yeah. is this nun so scary? <laughs> because religion is scary. <laughs> mm. I agree. Yeah. I honestly think that there are, are probably a lot of demons in the church. I hope I don't get uh, in trouble for saying that. <laughs> we'll figure. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. No one from the church thing. listens to this podcast. Yeah, no one from the church. <laughs> that we know of, Chris. <laughs> Kat, what would you say is uh, the genre that scares you the most? Because we ask our guests a lot, like, what is horror to you? Is slasher, are slasher films horror? Are thrillers horror for you? So what would you find the scariest? Is it religious horror? Is it supernatural? Ghosts? I mean, apart from zombies, which I already mentioned, like mm, for me, yeah. the ones that are scarier are the people who are crazy. Like ah. I never oh, watched oh, Saw. Like real? Oh, okay. Ah. Like I can't, oh. I can't handle it. Like it's too much for me because, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever met really crazy people. Because like, it's plausible. You know, basically. Twisted crazy people you know i've met some weird crazy twisted people and like there's no logic you know what i mean there's no logic there's no kind of uh empathy or compassion it's just i did it because i wanted to and there was no rules i didn't care who i hurt i didn't you know what i mean and like so that means it's totally possible that somebody could do it and it could absolutely happen i mean there are horrible people in the world and so those movies really freak me out most like um, no remorse yeah yeah so do like serial killer documentaries freak you out? No, no, no. I kind of like those. Um, I, I like the psychological aspect of it. You know what I mean? The documentaries are cool because I, I like to understand the mentality and the psyche behind these people. Like what actually happened to this person to make them like this? But in the movie, there's none of that. That's just, yeah. it's just slash hack, slash dismember, you know? And it's like, oh, you know, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. And they get uh, pleasure yes, from doing it. So it's strange. So the, those aren't my, I don't like those very much. <laughs> that's, that's my uh, scary. Yeah. That, that's entirely my jam, though. <laughs> <laughs> Slasher, that's, um, that's my thing. <laughs> that's my favorite. Really? Oh, yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> you said, <sicko. laughs> I don't, I tell no, me like, more. <laughs> I, okay, okay. I've, I've said this a number of times. I, I can't stand <laughs> religious horror. That's yeah. the one that really fucking freaks me out. Yeah, spiritual so horror. I, I do get scared every once in a while. It depends on which. Like the first paranormal activity that really scared me, Conjuring, the first one. The first one time I saw that, that was pretty scary. Slashers, I just enjoy. So that's why I, I, it's my favorite genre because I enjoy it. Like it, it brings mm. me joy when I'm watching it because I know it's, it's ridiculous. Because no, because it's, it's. I know it's so stupid. Like like. Slashers are so dumb. Like, you know, the, <laughs> the, the killers are always walking. You know, it's like just fucking sprint. You know, just yeah, you yeah, can yeah. outrun this guy. You know, because they're always just fucking plodding along, and it's it's just so ridiculous. And then, so I I, I love slashers as a genre because you know, because it, because it, it's fun for me. Because right. because I, I know it's ridiculous, but religious horror. You know, being a being a Catholic, it's just fucking you know, it's it's too close. Like, wow, that's. That's fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> what counts as religious horror? Are we talking about like ex, uh, exorcisms and stuff? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, stigmata. 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 Right, right, right. Yeah. Any saints yeah. involved? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah, like, I'd could, I also put it possessions. Like possession would yes. freak me out. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't watch that scene uh, from Emily Rose. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, the that one in the church? A, yes. 
That's yeah, a bad I one. Watch yeah, it was scary. It was That's pretty, pretty scary. terrible. Emily Rose I, I actually know some gets mentioned. Yes. Oh, so like <gasps> that's why it really freaked me out. Oof. Yeah, they had to do an exorcism and stuff like on her, and it like she told me about it afterwards, and I was like, dude, that is so creepy. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, 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 you know. No. <laughs> Yeah. No, <laughs> Anything that can be real life is like, okay, yeah. let's take a step back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah, trivia. Emily Rose gets name checked often on this podcast. Doesn't it? But we never. But no one's ever. Yeah, but we it. never. Because it's that sort of thing that freaks everybody out. Yeah. But isn't necessarily a great movie or an, or an original movie, but it's a movie that sticks on our mind because it freaked everybody out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, sorry, trivia. Well, we we just skipped quiet. Yeah, like, yeah. no, because yeah, we, I know, like yeah, Emily Rose had to kind of like sink in. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that movie is fucking freaky. Like, yeah, isn't yeah. that the? Uh, isn't that the? Uh, it's the girl from Dexter, deba. Right? Yes, but it's, it's the, the girl from of, um, White Chicks. That's how I remember. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah that's see, why we've had this conversation. Scary. Yeah, <laughs> we've had this conversation. We we referenced both Dexter and White Chicks, talking about this girl from Emily Rose. <laughs> I love her. Yeah. With Tina the talking ton. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, anyway. 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 So I think we've come to the point in our podcast where we kind of give our last thoughts on the mm-hmm. others on the movie. So yeah, let's do that. Uh, I will start. I, I, I do like this movie a lot. It did not scare me the second time that I saw it. But Everything that you guys said earlier about Nicole Kidman being amazing in it and nothing happening, but still being, but it's still being freaky. Yeah, it was really nice. It was nice to see it after 20 years. See, that's another thing that struck me. Like, what? Are you serious? 20? It didn't seem that long ago, mm-hmm. but geez, mm. 2001. Yeah. So last time I saw it was in high school. I have a more formed brain now. So I think I understood it more this time. So thanks, Scott, for picking this movie. Who wants awesome. to go next? I was uh, I was in grade school when this came out. I was <laughs> really young. <laughs> <laughs> I just graduated college. Anyway, go for um, it, Chris. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, uh, amazing movie. Um, I think uh, Alejandro Amenabar did an incredible job. I think it's it's so it's it's such a classic mu- movie in in every sense of the word. It's it's scored beautifully. It's shot beautifully it's amazing script amazing direction huge fan of it i saw it in 2001 obviously right when it came out um and i was blown away um and um mm. watching it a second time i think i actually sorry no watching it maybe like fourth or fifth time uh today uh, i actually think uh i appreciated it even more if that's even possible mm. uh, it's, it's a beautiful beautiful movie incredible movie masterpiece for me I'll go next before a cat gets to go last, no? Yeah. So for me, parang this movie, as usual, hits my sweet spots. And if you listen to this pod often enough, you know that those sweet spots are grief, artsy stuff, you know, well, well, well shot movies. And but aside from that, parang galingani this whole movie, like how it sets it up, like how it still is fresh and original, uh, despite being of that era where it was sort of the theme for horror movies to have people not knowing they were dead. So I enjoyed this movie a lot before. And I might give it a watch again just to see the visuals because I've missed it. Thank you, Kat, for making us watch this movie. You're welcome. So any last thoughts on the movie, um, Kat? Um, well, I mean, I feel like I've said everything in the movie. Like, mm. I think that as a, as a kid who experienced seeing things and wasn't believed by my parents, you know, this film really resonated me, with me for a lot of reasons. And can I just point out that Nicole Kidman, after 20 years, still looks exactly the same. Yeah. I mean, yeah. how is that fair? You know, and um, but yeah, great film. I think that it's a it's a timeless you know, movie, I think people will be watching it for a long time. And it's going to be one of those things you recommend to people like, oh my God, you, you haven't seen the others, you have to see it. Because it's just, it's beautifully yeah. made. And um, yeah. yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. I mean, seriously, Kat, so thankful that you <laughs> got this movie because <laughs> totally. you know, I'm in the zone again. It is. <laughs> I can feel it. I, I won't. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Are I you going to No, no, Chris, go. Chris, do it. Chris. Like, it's fine, Chris. <laughs> Chris is fine. Cry. <laughs> It's yeah, just so ahead. much fun when someone chooses a fucking amazing movie. 
you know, like I, I, I like a lot of the films that we talk about, but sometimes when a masterpiece comes along, you know, like this one, <laughs> that's when I lose my shit. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, Chris, you. But I forgot. But I, I didn't realize that how much. But I'm coming into this pod, this episode. But I knew you loved it or you enjoyed it. But parang by the end of the episode, parang wow, Chris, you loved it. Yeah, I, damn, Chris, you loved this really movie. Loved this movie. <laughs> Yeah. Sold out several times yeah. during. Uh, I, I really know. love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thanks again for for choosing this. Is there anything that you would like our listeners to know about what you're doing nowadays? Uh, do you uh, do you uh, do you want anything to promote? I have a new song coming out soon. Um, oh. I haven't got a, a deadline yet, like a due date, but um, soon. So that's something Yay. for people to watch out for. Is my new song that's coming out. Yay. Is there a awesome. channel we should expect Video it too. out from? Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to put it online. A... Uh, I'm going to okay. put it online and then it's going to be available on all platforms like uh, Spotify and iTunes and stuff. So. Lovely. Awesome. Can't beauty, wait. We're going to check it out. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for that. And thank you so much to our listeners for staying with us during this episode. If you enjoyed it, please let us know by joining, once again, our Facebook group, Dead Air, a horror fan podcast, and also liking our page on Facebook, Dead Air, a horror podcast. And if you want to message Chris, because he's the one handling <laughs> the Instagram, just check out Dead Air Pod on Instagram and also mm-hmm. buy shit from Shopee and use yes, the please. <laughs> Buy lots of stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, thanks so much, Kat. Thank you so much. We really thank you having you here. And uh, to our listeners, we hope you enjoyed this episode as well. Have a great day or evening or afternoon. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Brought to you by Big Baby Studios.